Grand Prix ISU de patinage, Internationaux de France, Grenoble 2021. ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating, Internationaux de France 2021, Grenoble. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. Bienvenue à la patinoire Pôle Sud de Grenoble à l'occasion du Grand Prix ISU Internationaux de France de patinage. Sous l'égide de l'Union Internationale de patinage, cet événement est organisé par la Fédération Française de Sports de Glace. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating Internationaux de France. This event is presented by the International Skating Union and the French Figure Skating Association. Mesdames, Messieurs, dans quelques instants, vous allez assister au programme court de la catégorie Dames. In just a few moments, we will start with the women category for the short program. Nous vous rappelons que l'usage des flashs et des vidéos est interdit durant la compétition car dangereux pour les patineurs. Compte tenu des restrictions sanitaires, nous vous informons qu'il n'est pas autorisé de jeter sur la glace ou d'offrir fleurs et cadeaux aux patineurs. Merci. We kindly remind you that taking pictures Welcome with Welcome to the Patinoire Pursuit here in Grenoble, which will be the home to the International Skating Union, International de France. And flowers are not allowed and this the fifth of six Grand Prix events as we Mesdames look towards the Grand Prix final in Osaka, Japan next month. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise set to be a fantastic day of skating, and we start with the women's event, which will headline Anna Sherbakova, the world champion. And as has been the case another Mesdames Grand Prix, great to see some spectators cheering on the athletes and the French fans, particularly eager to see world champions Gabriel Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron, who will take part in the ice dance event, which will be the second of the four disciplines competing today. First up will be the women's event with Leah Serna from France being the third to skate. But first we meet the officials and the judges who will decide the results of the competition today. Judge number one, Linda Lever, United States of America. Judge number two, Judge number two, So Young An, Republic of Korea. Judge number three, Judge number three, Daniel Delfa, Spain. Judge number four, Judge number four, Yuko Ogawa, Japan. Judge number five, Judge number five. Laimote Kruisen, Lithuania. Judge number six. Judge number six, Nicole Leblanc Richard, Canada. Judge number seven. Judge number seven, Yuri Klushnikov, Azerbaijan. Judge number eight. 
Church number eight, Elena Fomina, Russia. Church number nine, Elizabeth Lueston, France. Le contrôleur technique ici. The ISU technical controller, Emily Below. Le spécialiste technique ici. The ISU technical specialist, Ivana Jakobsevich Marinkovic. L'assistant technique spécialiste ici. The ISU assistant technical specialist, Kelly Kreikshank. And as is the case for the athletes here competing on the Grand Prix circuit, the judges and technical panel, some of the very best and most qualified, be able to officiate here at this standard of event. And what a standard it will be in the women as we see Anna Sherbakova taking part in her second of the Grand Prix events. But first, we look to Mariah Bell. And behind her, Star Andrews, who will both be representing America in this first group of six women who will take to the ice. And all of the athletes under increased pressure this year in the Olympic season. And for many of those skating today, what happens here and the scores posted can help to determine whether or not they will be selected to represent their nation on the biggest stage of all in Beijing next February at the Winter Olympic Games. So both incredibly exciting and tense moments for these young women. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the skaters of the women category group number one. And last week in Tokyo, no Russian women took part. Today we will see three young Russians of the 12 skaters in this event. Representing the Japan team, from Japan, Yuhana Yokoi. Representing the France, from France, Léa Serna. From Republic of Korea, Young John Park. From the United States of America, Maria Bell. From the United States of America, Star Andrews. Skater, six minutes of warm up. And starting proceedings, Senya Sinitsina, the young Russian, and it was a shock to have an event on the Grand Prix circuit last week at the NHK Trophy without any Russian competing. The first three events on the Grand Prix circuit won and dominated by different Russian women. It was Kaori Sakamoto who led the field in Japan last week. Will Wakaba Higuchi who competes in this event be able to continue that Japanese winning streak. Senya competed already on the Grand Prix. She was fifth in the opening event of the Grand Prix in Skate America, and she represented herself incredibly well there. I'm sure she's been working Second hard of the youth Olympic Games. in the three weeks she since she had to return at the on the Grand Prix ISU circuit. Grand Prix. From Russia, Ksenia Sinitsina. Warming up with the wallies in both directions. Incredibly difficult warm-up exercise. Deceptively hard, but a brilliant opportunity for her to get her jumping legs ready. Joanna, centre la main droite avec Yuriko Marousse et Nico Kawori. The second Grand Prix event also for Johanna Yukoi from Japan. She too competed in Skate America alongside Ksenia. She struggled more at that event. 
where she was in 11th place. You can see alongside Léa Serna, the French representative here, Brian Joubert, an absolute star in France and former world champion. He's responsible for the tuition and coaching of Léa Serna, who has a real opportunity to gain some brilliant learning experience. Nice big triple loops for Leah. She's competed a lot this season, four internationals already this season. Young Jaune is the most young patineuse of the category. She has only 15 years. She is trained by Yuri Solomon. The youngest in the event. She's the youngest skater of her category. 15 years old, and that a requirement by the International Skating Union. The, the women must have reached the age of 15 by July the 1st in order to be able to compete in the senior ranks. And this woman, the most experienced in the group. Janara Bell, multiple time international competitor, three time world championship competitor. She trains with Raphael Arutonian and Adam Ripon. She won the 2020 ISU Skeleton Tour. Mariah will compete in the last United two South events America, of the Grand Prix. Maria we Bell. haven't seen exactly what kind of form she's in. But Adam Ripon, her coach there, trying to ensure she delivers. And Star Andrews always had been assigned to this event. But she was called up to compete earlier in Skate America due to the withdrawal of Brady Tunnell. So she comes to this event with a little bit more experience, a little bit more competition ready, and hopefully able to move up from that 10th place position she had in Las Vegas. Last few moments, so crucial to the athletes. They're given not necessarily technique, but motivation and encouragement by their coaches. Skaters, there is one minute left in this warm up. And we'll see all of the ladies competing with seven elements in this short program. Three different jumping elements, three different spins, and a step sequence. And levels will be awarded to the spins and the step by the technical panel. And we'll see the judges deciding upon the component scores, the second mark as well. We've seen some big scores posted on the international circuit. World records have been broken by Kamila Valieva from Russia. And Anna Sherbakova, I am sure, will be eager to come close to that. Anything over 80 points in the women's event is huge. Thank you. On the ice from Russia, Ksenia Sinitsina. 
Senya will start the women's short here. Skating to music by Tchaikovsky. Double axle to start. Saves the combination for the end of the program. Does well, triple it, triple toe. And showing a consistency that is remarkably impressive from such a young athlete, Senya Senitsina. The 17 year old from Russia. Brilliant start to the women's short program with a clean skate from her. And potentially the best jumping pass at the end, the triple loops, triple toe. Some lovely, delicate touches throughout the step sequence. The, the body control within that was impressive, as too was the facial interpretation, which she continued to deliver to the judges. This one of the spin features for higher level. And as with so many of the women on the circuit now, an incredible range of flexibility. The panel just reviewing the rotation done in the air versus what's done in the ice. Again, that the donut has been another impressive demonstration of flexibility both through the legs and the, the back in that spike position. And the new judging system really forcing skaters to expand the repertoire of spin positions. I can't say new now, it's been in place for such a long time, but it has really changed the landscape of the spin positions for the athletes. Much more extreme shape to get the highest level and highest grade of execution. Ksenia posted the big 74.65 a couple of years ago on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. Ksenia, after the Antonitas. 
Just under the 70 mark, but a solid start for the young Russian. Johanna Yukoi really struggled in Skate America. Some challenges within the jumps in the short there. We wish her much more success here in Grenoble. out of the opening double axle. <laughs> Stepping out of the triple flip. Shame down on the loots. So you can see from the technical score, not comparable, unfortunately, with Ksenia for Johanna Yukoi. But that said, more attack and more conviction than when she competed in Las Vegas. When she was at Skate America, she just singled the intended triple loots. So arguably better here to have gone for the jump. I'm sure Coach would be relieved that she attacked the jump. That fall requires a mandatory one point deduction and unfortunately no jump combination for Johanna Yokoi. This is the best of the jumps, double axle, big long running edge. See good elevation. And skating to music like Malaguena does require so much attack. Big flip, big, big, big flip. She over-rotated the flip a little bit, making it virtually impossible to get the jump combination on, which she would have wanted after this loops, which was a really short rotation as well. This piece Malaguena used so frequently 
on the skating scene. And you use repeatedly because it's such a good track. I was going to bring up comparison though. Whenever you use a piece of music that's been repeatedly done, there will be comparison made to others. Just need a little bit more in terms of the interpretation to the music, I'm sure, for Johanna. But she's still young, and this, another great opportunity to learn. I'm sure she'll have been studying the other skaters competing here and using that as fuel for training when she returns to Japan. She scored 54.77 in Las Vegas. I think it's going to be a little bit lower than that, despite some improvements in aspects. And hopefully her coach will be able to help her see the positives from what she delivered here and use it going into the free skate, which will be tomorrow. To big opportunity for Leah Serna. She has competed at the International de France before, back in 2019 when it was last held. Wow, huge triple loots. Triple toe on the end of it. Great height and elevation there, again on the triple flip. And the double axle to round out the jumps. Well, what a skate for 
the Frenchman Leah Serena. And just huge triple loops and triple flip, demonstrating great jump technique. And interesting to know Leah comes into this with the disappointment of not having qualified for the Olympic Games. She competed at the Olympic qualifying event, the Neville Horn Trophy in Oberstdorf, finished in 14th place there. But comes to this event to really prove herself, and that she has done. And Brian Joubert will greet her with great delight. She's come off the back of the NRW Trophy in Dortmund just within the last couple of weeks. And a second place there obviously boosted her confidence coming into this, the Grand Prix. You can see no question whatsoever on the rotation of the first part of the jump. Maybe a cue mark on the second. This so clean in rotation on the flip. Really nice to see. And there's the butterfly entry. Some other great aspects. She had a wonderful butterfly as a transitional element. Lots of positives skating to the Kill Bell soundtrack for Leah Serena. And it was two years ago when this event was last held, International de France. Not obviously held last year due to pandemic. But it was here a couple of years ago where Leah scored her personal best of 62.43. So See how she's fared there. That was it. Great split jump, and I think this led into the butterfly as well. He wore black and I wore white. He would always win the fight. Bang, bang. He shot me down. Bang, bang. I hit the ground. Bang, bang. A little more attention to detail in the transitions in the choreography for the Russian Senya Sinitsina. So I suspect program component scores will be higher for Senya Sinitsina, who leads at 69.89. <laughs> but great just to see a happy coach and a happy skater. Brian, obviously, so successful himself. He's four time Olympian and a 2007 world champion. So she beats her personal best by a fraction. We'll see her again in the free skate, hoping for more then tomorrow. Sur la glace, représentant la République de Corée. On the ice from Republic of Korea, Yeonjong Park. And now to the youngest competitor here. In Jung Park from Korea. Another triple loops, triple toe loop. An effortless double axle from the Wally jump transition. Transitioning in and out of the triple flip.
And I love that facial expression right to the judging panel at the end of the program. And rightly so, she can be delighted with that skate from the young Korean. Very judge-friendly music to Frédéric Chopin and judge-friendly skating and elements as well. And there are so many strong Korean women on the Grand Prix circuit. There are six women from com Korea competing on the Grand Prix. And all trying to emulate Yuna Kim, former Olympic champion who was such a legend. There you get to see a really good close up of the edge going into that Lutz and it looked like she changed edge ever so slightly. And as you can see, less ice coverage on the second part of the jump combination, which is absolutely normal and to be expected. But the grade of execution does go up if the skater can maintain a similar length in the air for both parts of the jump combination. And it'll be two women who are chosen to select Korea at the games in Beijing. There's a huge fight on the route. In part, Young Jong doing everything she can to get the ticket using David Wilson as the choreographer for this piece. And it was David Wilson who created such great work with Kim Yuna on road to her Olympic gold medal win back in Vancouver in 2010. And interestingly, like some of the others that we've seen already, Park's personal best was from the Junior Grand Prix circuit a couple of years ago. And she got 64 points that season. Two years later for these athletes, so many of them will be working on the triple axle, which is becoming ever more commonly seen on the women's circuit. And it's that kind of element which will guarantee big score improvements. We'll see it later today, hopefully. I suspect the component scores delivered by Young Jong Park here will help improve that personal best. But maybe not quite enough to overtake Senya Sinatsina in the lead from Russia. So a new personal best for the Korean and into second place of the four athletes so far. On the ice, representing the United States of America, Maria Bell. So gorgeous skater now from the States, Maria Bell. She's been top 10 in the world back in 2019. We haven't seen much of her this season so far. Exciting to see what Mariah Bell from America offers. transition into the double axle. Oh, shame. Down and lacking rotation on the triple toe at the end of the triple flip. Centered flying sit spin. Well done, triple loops.
Just question if she held the rotation of the Bielman position long enough in that lay back at the end. Might have just dropped a level there. Technical panel will review. And she's just a beautiful, beautiful skater. So elegant and a joy to watch across the ice. But she and coach Adam Rapon will know only too well that that jump combination will be very costly. And using different music to that which she started the season with. And I think a perfect choice for her. She looks to be expressing it so perfectly. But this sport requires triple triples in abundance. And you can see there the blade not landing backwards. So she won't get the full base value for that element. Because possible downgrade there. So that's really costly on the technical element score. This was good though, the back spiral transition into a good outside edge on takeoff for the triple loots. No debate on the rotation there and a nice transition coming out. And there are lots of American women vying for the, the three spots that are qualified from Bridget Tanel and Karen Chen at the World Championships last year to go to Beijing. And I've no doubt Mariah is more than capable of representing her nation in China. But it did look and warm up like the jump combination wasn't comfortable. I started just do triple flip, double toe. Not successful in the program. She's got a week's turnaround from this event to going on to compete in Russia at the Rostelecom Cup. And they're working with Adam, who represents America at 2018 Olympics. He's going on to do some exciting stuff, winning Dancing with the Stars in the States. Great to see him now channeling all his knowledge and experience back into the current stars of American competitive figure skating. Difficult score for the talented Mariah Bell. Let's hope she can turn it around in the free skate. I think because like the toe was too, the base of it, you probably got like under rotated on the toe. So you fell in like a triple double. But everything else is you know, like everything else is like that. Second Grand Prix event for Star Andrews. She skated relatively well at that event, even though she was a late addition to the competition. Hopefully it'll be even better now here in France. fight through a difficult landing in the first triple toe. A little bit of short rotation in the second.
Disaster. Just a blank a little bit here, going in and out of that, which was intended. To oh dear, what is the problem here for Star Andrews? Well, this is sad to see. Not sure what quite has happened for Star. Popped that intended triple loop, and now she goes to the referee to assess the situation. The International Skating Union have protocol in scenarios like this. We should be looking over to coach Derek Demore to see what might be doable. Have to assume there must have been some pre-existing injury coming into the event. Nothing visible, particularly within the short program itself. She really seemed to struggle going into that loop, and now she's heading off the ice. Looking like medical staff and coach Derek Demo will look after her. So difficult times for Star Andrews. What a shame. And we can only hope that it's nothing too sinister or too serious for the American. As I said, it phenomenal short program that she skates to using her own vocals to the last piece. And it wasn't a great landing on the first triple toe, but she mustered the courage to go for a second. And at this point, didn't look like anything was troubling her. But these women figure skaters are made of such tough stuff and whatever pain she may have been feeling, Interpretation, performance capabilities. You can see a little wince, perhaps, on the landing of that double axle. Maybe a sign of something else. And it's the landing of that double axle on the right leg, which would have been the takeoff leg for the next jump, the loop. Which you can see here, you can tell going in. Oh, what a shame. And it's been a tough year for so many women on the circuit. In the short program at the NHK Trophy last week, the Russian Daria Usachova was forced to withdraw from the warm-up. The star at least got to compete part of her short, but sadly unable to finish the program and therefore out of the competition. So that obviously has a knock-on impact on the other women competing. They'll sense an energy change in the arena and they need to try and maintain their own focus now. I'm sure having empathy for the athlete they've just seen. And there, Ekaterina Ryabova just doing some brain exercises, get the body and brain ready as they take to the ice for the six minute warm up. Karen Chen, fourth at the World Championships in March. It was such a massive boost to the skaters in Tokyo to have the encouragement and applause of an audience. And hopefully the audience here will be able to elevate the skaters' energies as well. Here in Grenoble. Grenoble, home to the 1968 Winter Olympics. And it was that Olympics which helped to really push figure skating in America when Peggy Fleming won the event. And that started a love affair, really, with American figure skaters in the States. And there, Kostornaya, European champion, 
just before the pandemic changed the world. Ryan Lee from Korea, and there, the potential surprise package of Kaba Higuchi comes off the back of an incredible short program score at one of the Challenger Series events in Graz in Austria last week, and she's got some fans here to cheer and support her. So the ISU sticking to the times. Filling this time where Star Andrews would have been receiving her scores. As the fans of Sherbakova and their Kostarnaya come to support. And as I said, we had Russian wins in the first three Grand Prix. And Sherbakova, the world champion, is the heavy favorite to win again here. Although the fans of Kostanaya, who will be second last to skate, would love to see Alina on top of the podium after tomorrow's free skate. All the women will have had practice this morning. Kaba Higuchi was in good form, landing the triple axel in her run through practice this morning. And she too has fans to cheer her on as well. Star cannot continue competition and is windrun. To confirmation of the sad news that Star Andrews has been forced to withdraw. So our sincere commiserations and condolences to Star and her team. And let's hope she can recover in time for the US Nationals in January of next year. But now, the final six women take to the ice for their six minute warm up. But first, they will be introduced to the audience. From Republic of Korea, Hyun Lee. From Japan, Wakaba Igushi. Representant Azerbaijan. From Azerbaijan, Ekaterina Ryapova. Representant les Etats-Unis d'Amérique. From the United States of America, Karen Chen. Representant la Russie. From Russia, Alena Kostornaya. From Russia, Anna Sherbakova. Skater, six minutes of warm up. The so last to skate will be Anna Sherbakova, and she won the Grand Prix in Italy and Torino a couple of weeks ago. And she impressed all with her quad flip that she brought back. And we've seen quad loops here. So we have to assume that even more technical difficulty will be performed by the world champion, who I'm sure will be intending to be competitive with the score from Camilla Valieva, her training mate. She's just posted a big world record in winning her event. But first, another Korean. She finished seventh at the 2021 ISU Skate Canada Grand Prix from Republic of Korea, Hyun Lee. And this, as I say, she's not a surprise package. She's been on the scene for many years, devastated not to have qualified in one of two Olympic slots for the Pyeongchang Olympic Games. And that frustration, channeling and fueling what has become a resurgence to form with a glorious triple axel, and we hope to see that in her short program. She intends to use it here 
and she did do it, as I say, brilliantly in Austria at one of the Challenger Series events last week. She finished sixth at the IFU Grand Prix Skate Canada from Japan, Wakaba Iguchi. Many of the women in this event all have been together in Vancouver at Skate Canada. She's training in Moscow with Alexel Riabo and Ekaterina Bondurina. She finished second at the 2021 Denis Ten Memorial Challenge. From Azerbaijan, Ekaterina Liapova. The first Grand Prix for Riabova. She had a great world in March though. Let's hope she can continue that success. As ever, a huge triple loops jump. Karen has one of the biggest on the scene, and she, the fourth of the six women in this group, has been at the Skate Canada event, but it wasn't a success story for her there. Looking for redemption here. Tenth in Vancouver. So Kostarnaya, who really was the star of 2019-2020 season, before so many events were cancelled, including that Montreal World Championships, which she would have probably been favourite entering into. European champion, she finished third at the 2021 ISU Skate Canada Grand Prix. From Russia, Alena Kostonaya. She's had coaching changes and resumed training at the Sambo 70 rank alongside this young woman, Anna Sherbakova, the world champion. Struggling a little there. Her jump combination. The intention is triple loops, triple loop. Did struggle with that in Torino in the short program. National champion, silver European medalist and world champion from Russia, Anna Shevakova. And different music, different dress. This is a surprise here from earlier in the season. And they're elected to go triple loops, triple toe. See what she chooses in the program. Sherbakova, not renowned for triple axle. The, lead, the women are not allowed to attempt quadruple jumps in the short program as yet. That may change. The International Skating Union and the technical committees will decide upon that. But this season, no quads in the short program. And the triple axle will be the most difficult jumping pass that any of the women will attempt or are even allowed to attempt today and for the remainder of this, the Olympic season. So Kostanaya comes to the event with Triple Axel in her technical arsenal, but not quads. Sherbakova, not the Axel, but tomorrow we'll see the quads from her. So different tactics. Try to get on top. Coach Tammy Gamble just checking in with Karen. Looks like she may have cut herself. So common for the women to catch and cut their fingers when they're doing the spin variations and catching the blade and drawing blood for their craft. Skaters, the warm-up is over. Would you please clear the ice? Thank you. On the ice from Republic of Korea, Hyun Lee. 
So we've heard Chopin and Tchaikovsky and continuing with classical choice will be Ave Maria for Lee Hayen from Korea. Off axis in the air on loot, so elects not to do the jump combination here. She'll need to do that later now. Oh, difficult. The flying camel losing speed in there for it's going to be difficult to get the features in. Nice change of edge on the sit spin though. Triple toe on the end of the triple flip. She fell on that in her first Grand Prix assignment. Well done, Lee Hyen for digging deep for the triple-triple combination. She came in with the intention to start with the jump combination. But because of a tight landing on that first opening triple loot, she was forced to put it on the second jump. Now, that doing that and leaving the jump combination later in the program does potentially earn a bonus in points, but it runs a much bigger risk of failure because the legs are so much more drained and exhausted, so much more lactic acid build up later in the program. Here you can see off axis a little bit. And at this point, the athlete's brain is computing all sorts of options and considerations. Possibly what's going to be the most frustrating thing for high end will be the flying camel where she really struggled to keep the speed on the landing of the jump entry. Here you can see butterfly entry and just traveling three turns. Doesn't find the sweet, sweet spot of the blade to rotate with speed. And in losing speed, she wasn't able to get the relevant number of rotations in for the level four. And all of the women competing in this event expecting level four and all three of their spins in the short program. So that will seem like relatively Simple points to throw away for high-end 
Flying Camel Spin at level 4. We're 3.2, and it looks like it's just going to be 2.3 points for the level 2, which she did receive. That said, it's stronger for her than in Canada. So a former world silver medalist back in the last Olympic year after the Games, which she wasn't sent to. There you see her marking through the takeoff for the triple axle. And she knows she needs that kind of jump to get on the Olympic team for Japan this year. Wakaba Higuchi. It's a little bit funny this feeling inside I'm not one of those who can easily hide I don't have much money But boy, if I did I'd buy a big house Oh, nightmare. Just a single axle. What a shame. So excuse me for getting But these things I do So with the triple loops, triple toe. Looking triple flip. Life is now you're in the world. I know it's not much, but it's the best I can do. My gift is my song, and this one's for you. So difficult to twizzle with the head back within the step sequence. Just almost ethereal skating to the beautiful Your Song by Ellie Goulding. She has really improved and developed so many aspects of her skating and it was very evident despite the big technical mistake on the axle about the progress in her component scores and this piece of choreography by the epic Shailen Bourne really is a gorgeous vehicle for Rokaba. Just a shame that we didn't get the extra boost of interpretation, which would have been inevitable had she succeeded with the triple axle, which 
<laughs> her due diligence sees her just walking through now as she leaves the ice and relives the takeoff that forced the popped jump from a triple test single. And as I say, she's been quite vocal about her understandable desperation to be on the Japanese Olympic team here. Steps up and the legs separate. Just one and a half rotations in the air instead of three and a half. Did well though, didn't let it affect the rest of the performance. Had to fight hard for triple loops, triple toe. Maybe a cue mark on the rotation for the second part. But just such a gorgeous open neckline. And I do hope judges really go for it in terms of the program component scores. But well, the technical mistakes just be too much. It looks like now there might be Oh, that's so hard to twizzle with your head back within the cluster on the step sequence. She makes it look easy, and it's really not. But there, takeoff or flip. Looks like it might have a question mark on the edge takeoff there. It should be a back inside, might be a back outside there. So some unfortunate and worrisome little factors which might make the score lower than just it would be had it not been for the axle mistake in last week, just a week ago in Austria, she posted 79.73 in her short program, which is obviously a monstrously big score, which would be very competitive at World Championships. And this stage on the Grand Prix, really a little bit more valuable than the Challenger Series event where she competed last week. But last week she did struggle with the free skate, so hopefully she can turn it around now. Frustrating short program here. But let's hope for a brilliant free skate for Wakaba. We've not seen Yekaterina yet on the Grand Prix, but that 12th place in Stockholm at the World Championships with this same program was a brilliant result for the Azerbaijani. Because he missed the scenery, the native dancers, and the charming songs. But wait a minute, something's wrong. A clean triple is triple toe to start. Hesitant entry, but clean on the double axle. Solid on the flip too. Mama, mama's gonna tell 
And Yekaterina Ryabova proving why she's been top six at European Championships and top 12 in the world. She lays down another clean skate. More than justifying her selection to this caliber of event, the Grand Prix circuit. And I'm sure she'll be very satisfied and unsurprised. She looks well trained. And it's fascinating to see the coach education that Yekaterina has had. She's worked at the celebrated Sambo 70 rank in Russia with Terry Tuberitsa and then moved to rival rank with Yevgeny Plushenko. And now she's returned to her original coach and father, Alexei Ryabov. Here, dug deep for triple, triple toe. And it's the music that she did use last year. And certainly the interpretation of the music choice was vastly enhanced when this element was done. And she transitioning out with the twizzle. And Yekaterina has secured a place for Azerbaijan to compete in Beijing. And it's quite common that athletes who've maybe been born in Russia and originally represent Russia on the novice and junior circuit choose to represent a different nation to get that international competition exposure. There's such depth and such an incredible high standard in Russia that it's very difficult to go on the world scene because only so many skaters can come from one nation. And Yekaterina and her family making the choice to skate for Azerbaijan for a sensible one as she gets her ticket to Beijing and becomes an Olympian. Yekaterina hoping for more. PB of 64. So it's close. And we'll see her again in tomorrow's free skate. Two appearances at World Championships and just off the podium at both. Karen Chen from America. And a frustrating result. 10th place in Vancouver at Skate Canada. But looking for podium sites here in Grenoble. And slightly under rotated potentially triple loots and double toe combination. Gorgeous landing position on the double axle. And nice slaloming transition.
Again, a little bit under-rotated, at least on the triple loop. This, her trademark spiral. Perfectly timed to the music. <laughs> Such commitment to the music at the end, you can see Cut her finger on the Beelman as the last part of that lay back. And like Mariah Bell, so elegant, so expressive, and showcasing the likes of the lay back and that spiral, which are synonymous with American female figure skaters. And Karen has all the ingredients to delight an audience musical awareness and performance capabilities that are a treat to see, but the sport this season in particular is so heavily dependent upon the technical element score and that to some fans around the world is a worry and a frustration because they are desperately eager to see the promotion of more aesthetic and more performance factor. But here you can see massive drive up with the left knee, but that short of rotation on the loots forced her to elect to do just double. But perhaps the strapping around the ankles is an indication that the body's not at optimum fitness. And again, this, the second trip on the program, the loop, you can see the blade not landing cleanly backwards and the consequences of that and the score will be frustrating for Karen. And as we've said, twice fourth in the world champion. And Karen really the savior for American women skating in the last two Olympic cycles because it's her result at the preceding world championships, which has helped the United States Figure Skating Association secure three spots for American women at the games. And that's something that I'm sure other American female skaters are incredibly grateful for her in doing. She did it with Ashley Wagner and Mariah Bell at the 2017 Worlds. And then it was her score added to Brady Tunnell's score at Worlds, which created a low enough total amount to secure three spots for the States in Beijing. Interestingly, Famed American skater Gracie Gold has competed domestically this week and she posted a big score in her short program. So lots of debate as to who will be on that American team for the States. And Karen, certainly one of the front runners, staying in contention. 64.67 for Karen Chen from America. Wow. Didn't see any Russian skaters, no skaters from the Sambo 70 rank in Tokyo last week. Two stars competing here in Grenoble, France. And Elena Kostanaya, the first of those two.
Electing just to do the double axle to warm up and start the program. Biggs had a slight stumble on the split jump transition. But really strong triple flip, triple toe. And a great short program by Costa Naya, no triple axel. But it's certainly the most exciting performance that we've seen so far today. And she really is a brilliant character on the scene. And that, I think, is the reason why she is so celebrated by the fans, an engaging personality. And I think the New York, New York theme, a good choice for this fabulous young Russian. And they're stepping up into a big double, which looked like it never intended to be triple, even though she has been doing it this year. You see a little rock of the edge onto the inside for the triple loops. And there was talk online, one of our coaches, Neil Glackenhouse, suggesting that he was eager to see an increased work ethic and training. Great elevation on that second part of the jump combination. And this, it was on the inside three turn. Ever such a slight stumble, made me worry about the upcoming combination. Safely through, and it's that expression there which should see the judges reward her big on the program component scores. Judges looking for personal, creative, and genuine translation of the character and content of the music to movement on the eyes. That looks Appropriate description for what we just saw from Kostanaya, who sits alongside Eteri Tutbaritsa, coach of the reigning Olympic champion, Alina Zagitova, who's now fled the competitive ranks and enjoying a successful performance as a presenter in Russia now. She holds the world record of 85.45. It's not near that. It's a comfortable lead so far. No, I don't have any 
So, a change for Sherbakova since we saw her last in Torino. But hoping to repeat as a Grand Prix champion from her first event. And the flip with the usual difficult transitions in and out. The jump combination which eluded her in the short program at Torino. It gets triple triple here. Well, better than Antonio, and fascinating to see change of costume, change of music for the world champion. Skating here to Dangerous Affairs. And a program jam-packed with transitional content. It seems with Sherbakova that there are more steps in what she puts into a short program than any other just endless transitions and changes of direction in an attempt to push up both grades of execution for the elements and the transition component. And any changes made at this stage are surely with the Olympics in mind. Every fine detail of these athletes' lives with intention really of becoming Olympic champion. You can see the blade touching down and turning to forwards on the takeoff there of the flip. And there, changing edge, coming up into that catch wire balance after the landing of the jump, just forcing judges to go bigger on the grid of execution. This butterfly entry, difficult feature, and the changing edge onto forward inside for the flying camel. Yeah, great visual of the length through the jump and that one of the bullet points for the judges in deciding how to mark the jumps. Do they have good height and good length? 
as they flow in and flow out of the element. And if there's perceived to be enough, skaters will get a boost on the score with the grid of execution. Here, another transitional content, the Bielman spiral variation. So it was a triple flip, triple toe for Kostanaya. More difficult triple loots, triple toe for Sherbakova. But it looks like Sherbakova gets level four on this step sequence, but just a three for Kostanaya. But regardless who's on top here in the short program of the two women from Sambo 70 Ice Rink with the coaches Ederi Tukbritsa, and Daniel Gleikenhaus, it's going to be close enough for the free skate. And a slight shrug of the shoulders from Daniel suggests he might have been expecting a little bit higher. And it will be a point and a half between the top two. But a clean sweep for Russia in the women's event in the short program here. And as we had seen in the first three Grand Prix events, Russian dominance in the women's discipline. And terribly sad news for American women's star Andrews, who unfortunately through injury was forced to withdraw. So we really do send our best wishes to star and so sincerely hope that She'll be able to compete for one of the Olympic spots as the American skaters and all these athletes heard, head towards their national championships. Great start for the International de France. And we move on next to see the Ice Dance Rhythm Dance where four-time world champions Papadakis and Cizeron look to defend their title here from two years ago. Join us soon for that. 